Now that we have some of the more important components added to the drivetrain assembly, I am going to add some other smaller components. Let's make the axle supports for the side plates now. Start a new part and make a sketch on the right plane. Make a square starting from the center and then we can add the block we made earlier. Normally I would prefer to add the block to a separate cut extrude, but for this we will make the dimensions dependent on the block size. Dimension the square to be one quarter inch from the center of all the circles. Then make the part a sheet metal base, 0.125 inches thick. Add some quarter inch fillets to the outside edges and save it as S15-OS-S002. Before we add this part to the assembly, let's make the other side. Make a new part file. Again, draw a square and add the block. This time, make the block for construction. We will be using the block to add tapped holes to our part, but we still want the block to define our square size. This time, extrude the square 0.25 inches. Using the hole wizard, we will add some holes. We will be adding 1024 tapped holes to this plate so that we can bolt them right onto the side plate instead of using a nut and bolt. Go to the positions tab and make the sketch of the extruded feature visible, and then add four tapped holes to the corner circles. The center one is not needed. After you add all four holes, exit the hole wizard and start a cut extruded sketch on one of the sides. Use the polygon tool to sketch a hex shape in the center of the part. This will be linked to the center hole we skipped before. Make one of the sides vertical to keep it from rotating. Dimension the circle in the middle to being 0.51 inches. I added the ten thousandths of an inch to the hex, so we have some clearance and it is not impossible to slide the hex shaft into it. Now, extend the vertical lines to the bottom to make it slotted, and change the bottom two lines to construction. Close the sketch and cut all the way through the part. Now, let's add some fillets to all the corners like we did on the other one. Then, save this part as S15-OS-P001. Now we can add both of these plates to the assembly. Add the first one and made it to the outside of the side plate. Then, add the second one and made it to the opposite side. Use the Copy with Mates tool to add them to the other locations. Now you can mate the bearing on the middle wheel 0.5 inches from the plate we just created. This will let it use a standard spacer and also keep the bolt heads cleared from hitting the plates. Now your wheel should not be able to be moved side to side. If you want to add bolts to the wheel's assemblies and to the axle plates, you can. However, we normally will not add these because it adds more work for SolidWorks and for your computer. For this example, I will add them so you understand where the bolts go and what they are used for. We can now make some axles for our wheels. To find out an appropriate size for the axles, I added another axle support plate to the opposite side of the chassis, then spaced it out from the wheel a bit. This way, I was able to guess what the best size for the axle would be. 
After adding the plate and measuring, I found that an axle 3.5 inches in length will work best for this chassis. Start a new part and extrude a hex shape that is half an inch wide and is 3.5 inches long. If you are using the SIM pad, we have a template made for a hex shaft, and you can use that instead. On one end of the axle, we want to add a hole with the hole wizard, clearance for 1024. We will be using a bolt through the whole axle to hold it in place, rather than bolts on either side. If you are using the SIM pad's hex shaft, change the 1032 tapped hole to a number 10 through hole and delete the mirror. The axle name will be S15-OS-P002. Add the axle to the assembly and made it in place. Use the copy with maze tool to add the rest of the axles to the assembly. Now we can add some supports to the side plates. We add these supports to prevent our frame from flexing too much. Throughout the season, it can take a lot of abuse, so it is important that the frame is strong enough for many hours of use. These supports are usually just sheet metal pieces that are placed in the channel of our side plates. Look at the side view of the chassis and you can see some places that are open where we can add some supports. I will be adding three supports in between the chains. The first will be in the front of the chassis in the long chain stretch. The next two will be between the other chain lengths that come from the transmission output shaft. To find out the approximate sizes of the supports, I am going to make a sketch on the side plate. I will delete it later, but this is a good way to see what size things need to be. After drawing three lines, I can see that the best sizes would be 7 inches long and 2.5 inches long for the other two. The side plates will be made out of 0.125 inch thick sheet metal. Here is an example of the first one, and here is the other example of the other two. Add all of these plates to the assembly and mate them to the side plate. Now we need to add some rivet holes for them. To do this, you can measure the approximate area you want them to be placed at. Then go into the side plate assembly and add some rivet holes into the side plate. Here is the sketch I made to make the holes for those rivet holes. Then go back to the assembly and mate the rivet holes together. After all of this, your drivetrain should look like this. As you can see, our drivetrain is starting to come together. In the next video, we will begin to create other features and parts in the drivetrain.